Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, today, the session uh, will focus on uh, another important topic of uh, English literature, the development of poetry in 18th century. 18th century is known for variety of reasons. It's an age of prose and reason. It's an age of enlightenment. It's an age of satire. It's an age of development of novel. It's an age of Pope. It's an age of Dr. Johnson. It's an age in which we find variety of poets writing in English. We broadly divide 18th century poetry into two important parts. The first one, Age of Pope, and the second one, Age of Dr. Johnson. Let us begin discussion on 18th century poetry. The first half of 18th century is also known as Augustan age or classical age or age of Pope in English literature because Pope, Alexander Pope dominated this particular period and he was a classic personality, one of the most versatile writers in English. The man who could write the best satires in English was Alexander Pope. So naturally the poetry of this period is dominated by a grand personality, Alexander Pope. And that's why we call this age as age of Pope, age of Pope. What kind of poetry was written during age of Pope? We have some characteristics of uh, this 18th century poetry. The poetry was largely opposed to restoration licentiousness, what we find in restoration comedy of manners. The society of restoration was known for its licentiousness. So there is a restriction in both life and literature of uh, 18th century. So they insisted on the use of intelligence reasoning. They focused much on reasoning than on emotion and imagination. Emotion and imagination do not play major role in 18th century poetry. Emotion and imagination are the characteristics of romantic poetry. That's why 18th century is called age of prose and reason. The poetry of this age is commonly didactic and satirical. Didactic means poetry with a purpose. Satirical means poetry of ridicule, criticizing either the society, men, manners, these are some of the things you normally find in a age of pop. Yes. 18th century poetry was known for intelligence and common sense. And uh, it was mainly urban poetry. I told you that 18th century poetry is known for its focus on urban audience, London literature, it is artificial, it is urban, and naturally, there is no such poems on pastoral life, or village life, or country life. It was neglected by the Augustan poets. Augustan, it is already discussed why Augustan. King Augustus in the Roman Empire was known for uh, rich, you know, support for the uh, poets. That's why the very idea of uh, 
you know, literature is uh, to be very, very classical. So there was a dominance of uh, satire, dominance of um, heroic couplet. Okay, that's the great thing you find. To, to continue discussion on this issue, we move on to another slide here. Important poets of neoclassical period. Let us see. The first and great poet of this period is Alexander Pope. Alexander Pope, as I told you, is a representative poet of Augustan age. This period is also known as Age of Alexander Pope. His contribution to English poetry is commendable, very, very significant. He wrote wonderful satires, mock epic, and sometimes his satires are very harsh, but they provided models to the English poets of future time, and he was such a man. Of course, he was not happy in a personal life. His poetry is highly satirical, partly because of the disappointments he suffered in his life. Alexander Pope was not a very, very handsome figure, and he was often suffering from various ailments. So probably this also affected something uh, on his uh, writings. Uh, particularly, uh, Alexander Pope is remembered for his uh, uh, famous mock epic, The Rape of Locke. The Rape of Locke. The Rape of the Locke is uh, one of the greatest mock epics in English. We see epics in English, epics written by um, John Milton, Paradise Lost, Paradise Regained. But mocking the epic poetry, or you can see making a very small thing very big and using uh, all the great images for uh, ordinary things. That's what we call trivial, trivial, simple, small things. So in Rape of the Lock, you come across uh, Lord Peter uh, who cuts the lock of a lady called Belinda. Belinda is an upper class woman. Lord Peter is also an upper class man. There is a question of ego, pride between Belinda and Lord Peter. And Lord Peter cuts the lock, lock of uh, Belinda, whom she considers. So locks are uh, important, uh, you know, uh, symbols of, uh, you know, richness and uh, integrity of a woman. And this cutting of the lock is considered as rape of lock in this poem. Another satire you can see during this time is Epistle to Dr. Arbatnot. Epistle, epistle means letter. Uh, the poem is in the form of epistle, epistle to Dr. Abbott Not. It is a satire. You know, he, he, there were many persons whom uh, Pope opposed, Temple and uh, other people. The Dunciad is another satire. An essay on man, you are reading one of the pieces from Essay on Man this time. The proper study of mankind is man. Mm. Uh, so one of the pieces from Essay on Man is also prescribed uh, in your textbook. So Essay on Criticism, he, he also played a major role as a critic. And that is another important, significant contribution from uh, Alexander Pope. Other minor poets of this period, Matthew Pryor, mm. 
is very important work is the town and the country mouse. John Gay, we remember, John Gay uh, is uh, mainly remembered for his Beggar's Opera. Beggar's Opera. Edward Young is remembered for his poems like The Force of Religion, Last Day. Okay. Thomas Parnell is remembered for his poem, The Hermit. The Hermit. So this is all about the first half of 18th century, what we call age of Pope, what we call the Augustan age in English literature. We remember Alexander Pope, we remember, you know, John Gay, Matthew Pryor, Edward Young, Thomas Parnell. And the next half is Age of Dr. Johnson. We can also include here Age of Transition because after this age, we see the entry of Romantic Bread in 1798. 